Hello, my name is Dustin Woodman with Coconino County's Public Works Department. And Coconino County would like to share some information with you about how sandbags can be an effective measure for mitigating the impacts of flooding for your residents. Coconino County has made available the materials for making sandbags and this video is intended to demonstrate the appropriate methods for filling sandbags and for building sandbag structures around your residents to maximize their effectiveness in mitigating the impacts of floodwaters on your property. Sandbags come in many different sizes and uh, styles. Uh, one popular version is made of a polyplastic like this measuring roughly 14 inches by 26 inches. Uh, you'll note that the sandbags have a tie built into them for closing up the top. There are, there are several other iterations of sandbags, some that have plastic ties, some that have metal ties, and so you might find a variety of different styles, uh, but the basic uh, practice of filling a sandbag is the same for all, and uh, we'd like to demonstrate that for you now and talk through some of the effective procedures for filling your sandbags. Filling sandbags is a two-person operation, and before you get started, you want to make sure that you have appropriate uh, protective equipment, most notably gloves. You might also consider some eye protection, sunglasses, uh, and maybe a dust mask. Uh, if the winds are heavy, the sand can blow around. So the first thing that you'll want to do with your empty sandbag is fold down the top of the collar like this, as Ryan's demonstrating here, so that you can uh, have an eff effective handhold on the bag uh, for filling it. So you'll want to also be sure that you're using a spade and shovel so that the end of the shovel can fit within the sandbag. Uh, once you've got your bag folded down and you're ready to fill, just get a shovel full of sand. Fill the sandbag. You want to fill the sandbag about one-third to one-half full. And what this does is it allows for the sandbags to not become too heavy and it also allows for them to fit seamlessly together once we place them into a wall structure. Once you have the bag filled to your satisfaction, the next step is to tie it using the attached tie. First you'll want to pick it up and spin it around a couple of times to close up the top. And then using the attached tie, just wrap it around and uh, tie it as if you would a shoelace. And then your sandbag is ready to go. Next we'd like to share some suggestions with you about the most effective methods for building sandbag structures. You can see that a popular method for building a sandbag wall is just to layer the bags on top of each other in one single line like this. It's a common practice and you see it quite often, but it's actually not the most effective method for constructing a sandbag wall. This, uh, this style of a structure is not very stable and when there are high velocity flows or flows that have a large amount of debris in them. I mean, you can see it doesn't take a whole lot to just be able to, to kick that wall right over. An alternative to that is to build your sandbag walls in more of a pyramid fashion. As you can see here, we've started with a layer of sandbags on the ground that's three wide. And a, a best practice is really to build your sandbag structure as wide as you want it to be tall. So we've, uh, we've constructed a structure that's three or four sandbags tall. So we've started with a base layer that's three wide. When you begin constructing your structure, you wanna clear any debris away uh, from the ground in the area where you're going to construct so that the bags make a good positive connection with the ground. And then you'll lay, lay down your base layer of sandbags. Again, here we have done it three wide, as you can see here. The second layer then, would be too wide and placed over the joints of the layer below. And then the third and fourth layers if desired uh, would be a single sandbag, again placed over the joints of the layer below that end up fu finishing the pyramid of the structure. And you can see that this is a much stronger structure than what we've demonstrated in the single file uh, pile. When placing your sandbags, you're going to want to make sure that the tied end is tucked under the sandbag itself. 
And then when you place it, you want to place it over the joints in the layer below as if you were laying bricks. Once the bag is placed, just tamp it into place with your foot. And what this does is eliminate any voids in the bag and make a positive seal uh, with the layer below and filling in the joints of that layer. Another important consideration is that sandbag structures should really be no more than four feet high at the maximum. Once they get to be uh, about four feet high, they really become less stable and less effective structures. You can see this one that we've built is gonna end up being maybe two feet tall, and that's a good and effective structure. If you wanted to make it taller again, you would wanna start by making a wider base and building it up into a pyramid as we've done here. In some areas, ponding of water on the property might be a bigger issue than actually high velocity flows. In those situations, an effective strategy can be to wrap your sandbag wall in a thick uh, plastic uh, available at most local hardware stores. You can see here that we've built a sandbag wall uh, according to the same methods that we discussed previously in a pyramid formation, uh, three wide at the bottom uh, up to one layer at the top. But what we've done differently is that we've built the sandbag wall on top of uh, a layer of plastic. And you, what we've done is uh, place the sandbags on the side of the plastic closest to the residence. And then what we'll do is fold the plastic up over the top and secure it to the wall with an additional layer of sandbags. So you can see the plastic wrap should be on the side of the sandbag structure that is away from the house. So that as water is coming in towards the house and pooling up against the sandbag wall, the water will not be able to penetrate the wall and soak through in towards your house. Another consideration in flat areas where water is likely to pool, such as in the Dhoni Park area, is to construct your sandbag walls within the eaves of your roof so that water falling off of the roof is not trapped inside the sandbag wall and up against your home. If you use this method and you're constructing your sandbag structures near your home, you may also wish to consider adjusting your downspouts so that water pours out beyond the sandbag wall and away from the house rather than collecting within the perimeter of the sandbag structure and up against your house. Coconino County hopes that you found this instructional video helpful. While sandbag structures can be an effective method for mitigating the risks of flooding for your residents, there is no guarantee that they'll be effective in mitigating those risks for all kinds of flooding events. Uh, an additional important step that you can take to help protect your home is to purchase flood insurance. It's highly recommended that residents in the area do so in addition to any uh, property protective measures that they put in place such as sandbag walls.